So I've been doing some things poorly. One is I haven't been commenting very well, which uh, comments have always been a weak area of mine. Uh, I tend to comment things that I feel need to be commented, and hopefully the code, the rest of the code makes sense. So, I, But I think we could have been doing some more commenting up to this point. But I think a bigger sin is I haven't paid attention at all to warnings up to this point. So let's uh, let's see what warnings there are. I'm going to clean our solution and I'm going to build it, get the build started and wait for it to build. I actually paused the recording there. It took a while to do it. Um, no errors, that's nice, but we have all these warnings and we, I haven't been paying attention to them. So I think part of a cleaning up our code would be let's go address these warnings and see what we can find out. In fact, actually, I know some programmers go as far as on the projects. We go general here and we say treat warnings as errors. And we say yes. Um, and this is a religious debate. Huge religious debate. Should we have warnings there as errors? If it's a warning, do we really need to address it? Um, you know, what is a warning versus an error? In the compiler, a warning is, eh, you might want to pay attention to this. This could bite you. And I have had things bite me that were warnings. Um, but most often the compiler is like, it's not fatal, let's move on, but I'll warn you about it. But you can be as extreme as saying, treat warnings as errors, and you can say, well, you know what, let's look at this, turn off all warnings, then how extreme do you want the warnings to be? We can say, enable all warnings, and let's go do that on every single project we have here, and see what happens, because we only got 13 warnings now, but what happens if I say, we're going we're gonna to crank these warnings up all the way, and we'll do it here as well. Properties, G warnings is errors. Yes. How steep do you want to go? All the way, baby. Okay, click OK. Build. We go from 13 warnings to... Woo! <laughs> 628. This is going to be a long video. No, just kidding. In fact, actually, look at the warnings. They're coming from files that we didn't even create. These are... These are files we brought in and gtest. Don't know if Google can't get it right. Uh, da -da -da. What's all at this point? Now it's a, a true religious debate. What really is a warning? What isn't? You know, do you want to go to this extreme? No. In fact, let's just get down. Where's our R files? R files. Oh, we got matrix in here. And I don't know. Blah blah. blah. I don't. I'm not gonna go that extreme. Okay. I think that's useless. That's my religion. Uh, you take it or leave it. Let's. Let's start, I'm going to say warnings is errors, but let's go back to level 3 on all these, and then maybe if I'm feeling really picky, uh, let's see, enable warnings, then we can tune it up a little bit later, but at least for now, let's, let's see what warnings we do have and address them. Click OK, uh, build, and here we go. Bull started, or build started, bull started. Build started, build failed, because we have warnings. Okay, this first one. Intermediate directory does not end with a trailing slash. This build instance will add a slash as required to allow proper evaluation. If you remember, this is on the engine tester project. So I'm going to go to the engine tester project and hit properties. Remember on the general we said intermediate directory. I put this temp here so we didn't get all those trashy files sitting next to our executable in the output directory and it's just complaining and saying hey we need a backslash there so that'll get rid of that warning bool bool b gets query performance frequency if you remember we use this function with our clock and i'm going to click here and hit f12 and we see that query performance frequency its return type is b-o-o-l if i click on b-o-o-l that's type def to be an int and you're probably scratching your head thinking why is that type def to be an int it's a bool, why don't they just type def the bool to the bool? Well, I kind of see in one reason why we have type defs. I could switch this to a bool and that would take care of that error. But I think I should probably be best to explain why it's an int. This comes from old C days where it didn't have booleans, so we use integers to do checks. A, a zero meant false and anything else that was non-zero meant true. And so the compiler's complaining saying, hey, you know, yeah, your type def may be a bool, but I don't know what that means. It's really an int. And so over here where you do this bool b gets query performance counter, where you're basically saying bool b gets the value of some int. So I'll warn you about that, but I won't force you to do anything about it. Unless you tell me to force you, and I am. So how can we fix this? Well, it's pretty simple. It returns an int. So if I say bool b gets query performance frequency, if that is not zero, 
then we know we're good. Okay, so now that I'm using this not equals, well, this operator takes in an int on the left, an int on the right, and returns a Boolean, which then I can assign to B. So that's good. And we have the same problem here. We're returning an int, which has to be coerced into a bool. So let's just put the same logic there. Okay, let's build again. Hopefully we've lost three warnings. Uh, okay, good. Ten warnings. Argument, truncation, double the float. Now, I do this a lot, and I need to get better at it, but... This is a double. When you type out a floating point literal like this, the compiler says that's going to be a double value, or a double type. A double type, and if we want to flag the compiler and make that a floating point value, well, it's what I've been doing in other places of the code. I put an F there. Now that literal is a float, and same here. Looks like we have a lot of these where I was getting lazy. You may be wondering, hey, Jamie, um, but this int, don't you have to put an F there? Well, if I put an F there, then we get squiggly, so then I have to do 5.0 F which is okay, but, and maybe I should do this, maybe I should be consistent, and make all my floating point values floating point values, but I'm going to just kind of lean against that for now. So why, what's the problem this, with an int? Ints are implicitly convertible to float, no problem, the compiler takes care of that, no need to warn us, that's fine, I'm going to build again, just freshen up our list here. Um, pi, okay, remember pi, oh, <laughs> uh, uh. This one's going to be tricky. Remember this pi? I'm hit F12 on it. And pound to find pi to be this big, long, ugly thing. But this is another literal, and the compiler's going to say, hey, that's a double. It doesn't have the F on the end. Now, I could go modify my file to have F, but then that, that'll work on my machine, but it's not going to work on my team's machine. And I know I'm flying solo here, but I... Definitely don't want to mess around with my standard library. So you may think, well, just drop the F there. Well, now the red squiggly says, hey, uh, uh, eh, I don't know what mpy F is. The preprocessor is just trying to find this. All right, mpy F. It's, it's not like it's going to replace mpy with 3.145597. The, the preprocessor is literally looking for this entire token, and it can't find it. So you may think, oh, let's add a space. Well, now that F doesn't directly suffix the 3.1415927, etc. that's pasted here. And so the compiler's like, uh, there should be a parenthesis. The F has to be right next to that string, or not that string, that float literal here. Okay, mpy, it has to be right against it. So what do we do at this point? I think probably the best thing we can do and again, this is just a design decision I'm going to have to make, but I, I don't like including math.h anyway just to get this pi value. So what I'm actually going to do is go to our let's go to our engine here and add a new item header file, and I'm going to call it actually let's do this in math. Add new item header file, and we'll call it constants. And header guards, pound, if and def, engine, math, constants, h, pound, find, control, end, pound, end if, oh boy, I'm not doing very good today, am I? Uh, okay, and then in here... Let's do, you know, and actually, there's a disadvantage to using the macros. I mean, yeah, we'll probably never have an m underscore va pi value, but it's still a, a macro. It's a preprocessor thing. Go check out the preprocessor videos if necessary to understand why macros make bad constants, even though we still use them and still do. Um, but I'm actually going to make it a compiler constant instead. So uh, in the namespace, math. Namespaces are one of the things that preprocessors ignore. Let's do const float pi gets. And I could probably pull pi from some other library or middleware that I have, but I want pi to be our own, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put an f there for the suffix. Uh, that's IntelliSense having personal issues. Now I could come here and proactively grab all these values and put them in, and I probably should, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put them in as needed. And we'll just start with pi. Uh, so when I build this, let's get those errors, or those warnings back up. And instead of saying mpy, we need to pound include our constants. Pound include 
Uh, oh, it's math. Math slash constants. Control minus to end up where we end up back where we belong, and then pi here. So I'm control C that. Highlight this. Control H to get the searcher in place up. Notice it automatically populates with m pi. I'm going to replace that there. Replace all five occurrences. Control Shift B. And I forgot this F right here. Okay, build, build succeeded. There's no warnings, there's no errors. I'm feeling pretty clean. Our ship still flies around. I think we're good there. But then I also want to run our engine test. So set this up as a startup project. We're still getting green. I'm feeling good. Good time to commit, so let me pause and commit my code. <laughs> 